Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I'm going to start on the ruffles out of the poplin fabric and what I've just done is laid out the fabric on the ground. I've got six meters of fabric here. Um, there's three meters lengthwise and it's on the fold. The fold is up there. Um, and what I'm going to do is cut out eight, in, eight inch wide strips of fabric. Um, so like just imagine long strips and those are going to form my ruffles. So I'm cutting them out to be around eight inches wide so I can then fold them in half and then they'll be four inch wide ruffles. Um, that's my thinking there. So yeah, I'm going to get started and get cutting. I'm hoping that my cutting won't be too wonky, but we'll see how it turns out. So I finished cutting out all of the strips of fabric. So I've got five, six meter length strips of eight inch wide pieces. And then this is the off cut, which I might use for the um, facing or to like finish off the actual edge of the skirt. Um, but we'll see if I can use that for that. Um, whereas all of these other pieces, they will be used for the ruffles. Um, I guess now it's time to iron each of these pieces in half along the length of the fabric to create the double layer of ruffles. So for each of these pieces that I just cut out, I'm going to um, basically fold, fold them in half along the length of the fabric like so. And you can see that this fabric is really lightweight, so I feel like that um, gathered up itself won't provide enough structure in the ruffle. So that is another reason why I think doubling up the ruffle in terms of how many layers of fabric it uses um, will, will be a good thing. So I've just got my iron set to the lowest setting because this is basically polyester fabric, um, synthetic fabric. Um, and then I'm just going to run the iron across the whole length of the fabric, folding it in half. And I think as I go, I will also um, like tuck under the raw edges. So these parts here, I will tuck them in about a centimeter the same way that I did um, those cotton layers yesterday and then I'll iron that as I go as well rather than do it separately to when I iron down the fold because I feel like this is going to take a long time and if I can work on one section move on and not touch that section again um, I think that will be the most effective way of doing this um, I think my iron needs to be set to a little bit higher of a setting because it doesn't seem to be warm enough to set these creases in place. I really want to make sure that anything that I iron 
is really set in place. Maybe I'll put it to the silk setting. And what I usually do is do that where I leave the iron on the part that I just folded under and then I move on to the next little section and then move the iron and hold it over that section while I move on to the next. So that's generally what I do. This is not following any sort of particular technique. This is just something that I'm making up as I go. Um, all of the tutorials that I found online about making ruffles, uh, they just use like a, um, a single layer of material and they use a rolled hem foot to, um, as the name suggests, do a rolled hem uh, to get rid of the raw edges on that single layer. Um, but I don't have a rolled hem foot. I did order one um, from online, so I'm hoping that comes in the mail sometime. I don't know if it would actually fit my machine, but um, I'm doing it this way, uh, folding the raw edges in on themselves and ironing them down, and I'm hoping that uh, this will be sufficient. But I don't, I've not seen this uh, particular technique that I've just made up um, used anywhere else on the internet. Um, but let me know if you guys have found any anything online that sort of does what I'm doing now. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to continue doing that for like whatever five lots of sixes, 30 meters of fabric. No. Oh gosh. That's my life. I'm going to uh, sit here and do that for I'm going to estimate this to take me a couple of hours um, considering how slow I am um, yeah but I've got my ironing board set to a lower uh, a lower setting and then I'm able to just sit here rather than stand because I don't want to be standing for that long and there is a lot of material to get through I'll just show you what's on the floor here on the side all of that and then I have to do all of those pieces as well. inwards as you can see and there's all the rest of it over there so now I'm going to bring this to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch along along the uh, folded edge to keep those raw edges hidden under um, and I'm going to do that for all of that down there so yeah that's the next thing
it's now the 23rd of May and all I've done is put gathering stitches in one length of fabric and I still have all of this to go through. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. Or is it afternoon? I think it's like lunchtime. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've slept in. But yeah, I am going to put in the gathering stitches along the folded edge and I'm just using the longest uh, stitch length on my sewing machine and what I'm doing is uh, I'm sewing the long basting stitches so they cover about an arm's length of material and then stopping and then doing it again um, to continue, continue along the length of the fabric rather than just doing uh, one, one whole stitch across the whole length of the fabric um, because I don't want to run into any problems with the thread breaking and such. So yeah, that's the plan for today. This is probably going to take a few hours, so I'm going to watch something. Perhaps either Sound of Music, the musical, because that's on YouTube for free, or I might watch I might watch YouTube instead like I usually do. Or maybe I'll watch something on Stan. I watched a movie on Stan last night. Anyway, that's the plan. Let's do it. I've just finished sewing long gathering stitches along the fold of each of these lengths of fabric as you can see and what I did was I tied knots um, to the threads at each point if you will um, so like I said I've put in the stitches so they're about an arm's length so uh, this one this stitching from the end here it finishes over here and then I've knotted those threads together and then I've started again and then knotted these threads and then I just continue doing that um, along the length of the fabric. So once I've got all of the stitches in and I've got the threads knotted and it's really important that the threads are knotted because depending on which thread you pull on, like if you pull on this side, you don't want the threads coming out on the opposite end and likewise if you pull on this end, you don't want the threads coming out on this side. So that's what the purpose of the knots are for. And then what I end up doing is I literally just start, I don't, I don't like tend to pick a side whether I start on the left or the right side. Um, and sometimes I'll work from both ends, so sometimes I'll pull threads from there and from here as well. Um, but it just depends on how the how the thread is able to gather up the fabric and basically what you do with the thread is you start pulling on one of the on, on one of the threads don't pull on both at the same time um, so I'm going to pull on this this one here so I'll start pulling that and you can see that that's starting to gather up the fabric so I continue doing this and it's important to be really gentle otherwise uh, you may end up breaking threads and that's something you don't want because once you've broken a thread um, basically you won't get uh, gathers um, because there's no thread in place to gather it because it's broken. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll work my way really gently um, pulling on that single thread and gathering the fabric as I go. And like I said, sometimes I'll work from this side and then I'll um, go to the opposite end and I'll start pulling from that side so it just depends on what uh, what tends to work better but the most important thing is to be very gentle so yeah this process takes quite a bit of time um, so I'm going to put this on time lapse um, yeah but essentially I'm just gathering the fabric um, to the point where I'm happy with how the gathers are looking but I don't want to secure the gathers just yet because I still need to 
um, figure out how I want these to lay on the actual base fabric. And you know, if there are if there are gathers that need to be gathered up a bit more, I can I still have the ability to do that, or gathers that need to be let out. So yeah, I'm just going to gather the fabric um, enough so that um, it's not this long, and also so I'm able to uh, change up the gathering a little bit at a later stage. Um, so I'll probably gather, so that length of fabric, that was originally an arm's length of fabric, and now it's like two hands wide, two hands long. <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope that gives you an idea of um, how much I'm gathering this fabric. Um, and yeah, it's once you've gathered the fabric, you will have like these really long threads. Um, I just try not get them tangled. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put all of this on time lapse because it's going to take a while. Okay, so it's Sunday now, the next day, and this is what I'm dealing with. Um, so as you can tell, the ruffles are going in like every single possible direction. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is put this under the iron and try and iron out all of the gathers so that they're all going in one direction rather than spirals like what it is now. Um, yeah, so I've gathered a lot of the fabric. Um, here's my hand for comparison. It's quite a lot of fabric. Um, so I'm hoping that once I've ironed all of this out, it will be more flat and I can start attaching it to the base of the train ruffle, which is folded up over there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring this to the ironing board now and hopefully this all goes well. So I've just finished ironing down one of the strips and you can see that the pleats are lying nice and flat in one, well they're not even pleats, they're gathers. The gathers are lying nice and flat in one direction. Um, I sort of just like pressed the iron on top, I didn't worry too much about how each of these gathers were uh, lying. Um, yeah, I just put the iron on top and flattened it down that way. I tried to make sure that a lot of the top edges were facing outwards, but it's not always possible. And then in between where I've got uh, like the separation between the gathering stitches, I've tried my best to uh, bridge that gap. So I'll probably just iron that flat down like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue this for all of my other pieces now. Um, you can see the difference actually that these are flat, those are not. Um, I will get one of those pieces up on the ironing board and I'll show you what I did exactly with this piece um, and that should give you an idea of how I actually achieved this. Now apologies if the table keeps shaking, I've got my camera just um, up on, on the ironing board so I am using the ironing board so it is probably going to wobble a little bit but this is the only setup I can really figure out <laughs> um, at this point in time. So here I've got my ruffle and you can see that it's all just uh, like a spiral um, and it's not really flat. Um, so what I do is I just work section by section and I pull down on the, the ends of the ruffle and sort of get them lying flat and then I will grab the iron and I will press this down and that will form almost like pleats. So even though these are gathers, um, the way that the iron presses down on the fabric 
um, it forms almost like pleats or um, creases, like a lot of creases in the fabric. So I, I sort of just leave the iron on to really get the fabric lying flat um, because it's, <laughs> it's really difficult. So it can be a little fiddly. So usually I'll leave the iron on a small section and then I'll work on the next section. So you can see that I need to flatten out this fabric and I'll try and make the gathers sort of even. And then once I'm relatively happy with how it is looking, I will grab the iron and then flatten that next part like so. And then again, I will like leave the iron on that section while I work on the next little section. So again, just um, pulling down on the gathers to make them lie even. I'm not sure if this is making much sense, but I'm hoping that by showing you what I'm doing, it will make sense. And if you're wondering, I've got my iron set to the wool setting. It's the one just after silk. Um, this is poly cotton, not poly cotton, poly poplin fabric. So it is 80% polyester, 20% cotton. Um, so if I put it up on the cotton se setting, then I would not burn the fabric, but I would melt it and it would, uh, yeah, it would melt um, because I have done that before and that's what the fabric does. So I've got it set to a bit of a cooler setting but I still have it hot enough to the point where it will set the fabric. And then sometimes I will press down on the steamer part and then that will really set the fabric. Yeah. So you can see that already that that's nice and flat compared to this section up here. So I'm going to continue doing this. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to say about this. Um, with this section here where um, I've got the break in the gathering stitches, I will pull on the end of the gathering stitches to gather up that little section. And then again, just try and arrange the fabric so it is uniform with the rest of the fabric. And then pulling down on the fabric to make the form the pleats and then ironing that down. So there isn't really much to it. I just keep doing that. And I really don't know if these pleat gather thingies will work with the train ruffle um, and work with what I'm after, but we'll never know until I try. So. I'm trying this out and hopefully it will work out. So I think, I think it will work. I think it will work. I hope it will work. So yeah, I'm going to continue doing that. I've got, I believe I have five more strips to go through. Four or five strips left. Um, and then after that, I can work on arranging these on the base of the train ruffle. So it's been about two hours and all I've gotten done is ironed down those three strips. I still have this one and 
that one to go. And to try and motivate myself, I've laid out the train base on the floor and I've got the ruffle that I did quite a few weeks ago, um, that larger ruffle out of the old bedsheet material um, just across the top and then you know once I've ironed that piece and this piece I can start laying the other ruffles onto this space and um, yeah and hopefully I have enough ruffle. Surely this is enough right? <laughs> But I think after they've been ironed, they are quite flat and that is a large surface area to cover. I'll make it work. Okay, so I finally finished ironing down all of the strips of fabric. I got really lazy towards the end and basically I just sort of pressed the iron down and I didn't care too much about how the pleats were forming. Um, there are some, there are some like parts where there's just um, a heap of fabric all bunched into one place. Um, and it's not very even, but I really don't care anymore. Um, this will do. So now what I am going to do is place all of these strips onto the base of the train ruffle and just work out placement and see, see how I go. I really don't know if I'll have enough ruffles to cover the surface area or if it will provide enough structure and body, but we'll see. I'm hoping I'm hoping to use all up like use all of these pieces to go along in tiers along the uh, base. Yeah. I, I think I'm just gonna place them, uh, just lay them down. Um, and I'm not going to pin or anything right now because uh, I think I just want to play around with what I can actually achieve with um, the amount of fabric that I've got. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 